Hi, thank you for joining us for Door Feeling Solutions Emerging Energies and Existing Infrastructure LinkedIn Live discussion with Senior Director of Product Management Peter Van Nel and Senior Product Manager Joanna Hawkins. How are you both? Doing great, thanks Sarah. Very good, thank you. Good, great, let's get started. Um, Johanna, can you describe what the current fuel retail environment is like regarding the ongoing energy transition? Uh, I would say that the fuel retail environment is uh, growing fast uh, with energy uh, transition. Uh, the retailers must be proactive, uh, embracing change and need to adapt to new market dynamics to remain competitive in the future. And we see that they are embracing new technologies and business models uh, to remain competitive with focus on sustainability, uh, environment and also shift in uh, customer needs. Great. Peter, is it true that most EV chargers run separately to the main point of sale system? Yeah, today that is indeed very often the case. Uh, so when uh, EV chargers are being added to existing fuel retail sites, uh, they typically run independently of the existing forecourt and the shop infrastructure. So they also tend to be placed a little bit out of sight for staff and not connected and operate within their own ecosystem uh, with very specific payment methods, uh, charge cards, and they are only remotely managed, often even by a different company or entity than the one managing the forecourt and the shop. And this leads to often the unavailability of the EV chargers with no local support possible from site staff and therefore frustrated customers. Mm -hmm. So an integration of EV chargers into the fuel retail site system does make sense. Absolutely. And how can fuel retailers integrate new fuels like EV, hydrogen, or LNG into their existing forecourt infrastructure? Peter, I'll come to you for that one again, if that's all right. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, well, basically we can start from the site system itself and then connect all of these new energies or new fuel types uh, into the existing site infrastructure. Uh, and that can easily be done uh, when we look at hydrogen or LNG or CNG, because we're doing that today just using uh, the existing protocols and adding them to the site uh, system itself. For EV, it's a little bit more challenging, and there we have to go back to what really makes sense. Okay. And uh, I would say for uh, hydrogen and LNG into uh, existing sites, when you want to integrate them, of course, it requires careful planning, uh, investment and partnership within the industry. Uh, we have developed our clean energy products to fit into existing sites and for new ones. Of course, there is approval and safety aspects to be considered. Um, and we recommend the fuel retailers to work closely with industry partners and then hopefully successfully integrate new fuels like hydrogen and LNG uh, into their existing sites to provide customers with additional fueling options and also supporting the change to uh, cleaner energy. Yeah, and I would like to come back, Jen, on, on the EV part, uh, because integrating EV chargers is a bit more complicated and, and needs some careful thought uh, and very important to evaluate the perspective of both the consumer and the fuel retailer. Now, if you look at it from a consumer point of view, it's important to have a unified experience. Uh, the customer journey should be simple, efficient and familiar. So consumers, they expect the same level of service, even personalized service, as they are used to from traditional fueling. That includes uh, the use of available payment means, but also access to their personalized benefits, loyalty, discounts, coupons, and whatever you can imagine. So for fuel retailers, it's, it's different. They are in a privileged position because they own very important infrastructure and they have a market mm. position uh, that they are aware of. So they have the brand, they have the means to do so, so they can capitalize on that electric mobility evolution. And doing that is creating synergies between the EV parts and the traditional forecourt and shop infrastructure. And then they can provide their customers with the right user journey. Of course. And Johanna, we, we touched on this earlier about how there's different considerations. And Peter, you mentioned this as well for how to integrate new fuels onto the forecourt. Um, is this an effective way for fuel retailers to stay ahead of the competition during the energy transition? 
Yeah, there are several uh, practice steps uh, that they can do, uh, and that is expanding their fuel offerings, investing in uh, infrastructure, embracing new technology, uh, partnering with um, uh, stakeholders, and prioritizing the sustainability initiatives uh, that we currently see. And I think that by taking these steps to adapt to the market, uh, retailers can position themselves for a long-term success in a, a very fast-changing uh, industry that we see. Yeah, of course. And and Peter, just to touch back on what you were mentioning earlier, can current DFS payment and loyalty systems integrate with both clean and conventional dispensers? And can you kind of touch on how that would work? Yeah, I can. Um, so our generic payment and loyalty solutions, uh, they are fully enabled for all types of energy and mobility, whether we're talking about EV, hydrogen, CNG, LNG, or traditional fuels, uh, one solution covers it all. Now, there is a little bit of a difference between uh, the fuels, whether they are traditional or the new fuels, and EV, uh, because for EV, it's a bit more complicated. Um, mm -hmm. But what we want to do is offer a wide variety of payment options so that everyone can fill up or charge their car at any time. Uh, so more and more you will see payment terminals integrated or next to the DC EV chargers. Uh, there's also a European regulation, the Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Regulation that is on the horizon. And mm -hmm. that will mandate uh, the use of standard payment terminals and standard payment schemes uh, for EV charging. And that offers a lot of benefits because uh, the retailers, they can control the payment transaction flow. They can control the fee structure. Uh, they can reuse the existing infrastructure. Uh, so where today we already have outdoor payment or even indoor payment, cash payment available uh, within the C-Store or on the forecourt, this can be reused for EV as it can be used today for hydrogen, CNG and LNG dispensers. Yep. So a lot of benefits are there for the fuel retailer. And I haven't even touched on the loyalty part. <laughs> uh, again, this personalized part for the customer, the customer journey is critical. And that customer ex expects the exact same behavior, whether we're talking about EV, hydrogen, CNG, LNG, as they do today with their diesel or traditional fuel yeah. pumps. I think it's reassuring to know that although the energy transition is changing the way that transport's kind of being looked at, both from a retailer and a consumer perspective, that not everything has to change and some of the solutions that they've already invested in can work for both fuels on energy types as they move forward as well. Absolutely. And finally, Peter, what else do retailers need to take into consideration before investing in clean energies on their existing forecourts, specifically when it comes to payment and loyalty? Yeah, I think the most critical part is to understand their customer's journey. And that is key to making those decisions. What is the energy mix that their customers need and how do they want to offer their existing or even new services to their customers? The customer is really the central point in all of this. And it's the customer's energy mix that will define the investments that our retailers need to take. Another important element that I see is the regulatory changes, and that is more specifically on the EV side mm -hmm. and how the retailers will anticipate on these regulatory changes. We know that they will come. Uh, EV has been uh, at first all about getting volume out there, getting the EV chargers out there. Uh, but now you see more and more a drive towards uh, regulation. And it's all about open payment methods, which we're already seeing from the EU coming, but also visibility on how the pricing is set. Uh, I also expect some weights and measurement impact and so on and so on. So investment decisions that are taken today, they must take into account all of these upcoming regulations. So both current and future regulations, and that will define uh, which investments will take priority. Mm. No, so what I would say, uh, just as Peter said as well, is uh, careful planning, uh, choose an industry partner with knowledge and experience. Uh, good communications on expectations, um, what it is that you want to do and what we can provide. And with that, I believe that the retailer's uh, investment will be a success. Brilliant. Thanks for listening to our LinkedIn Live today. If you want to find out more on how our payments and systems connect with clean energy, do join us at the Unity Expo in Stuttgart, Germany between the 14th and 16th of May. 
You'll find us on stand 5C10 in Hall 5. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.